Today we are talking about another beautiful personal awakening and discovery of purpose of a beautiful black woman. Hey everyone, it's Rushni of Glamazini.com. I'm a life coach and I am a black woman healing. I create humor filled healing spaces so that other black women can heal too. You're welcome. Yay. Okay. So <clears throat> let me get some housekeeping out of the way. First of all, I have with me a guest. I'm going to let my guest introduce herself. But before we start, her connection is trying to is trying to is trying to play with us. Okay, so in the we can hear her, but in the case that her connection isn't connectioning, please have grace. If you are watching on Facebook, on I don't think LinkedIn went through this time on YouTube or on Twitter X, drop a pineapple in the chat. Let me know where you are watching from. In the month of April, my theme is introducing you identity, discovery, and creation. Okay, identity is who you are. Discovery is locating something that's already there, amen? And creation is bringing something into exist existence that was not there before. With me today, hi, not your mom. With me today, I have a guest and a coaching client. Yay, Saran, I'm so happy to see you. Dr. Saran P. King. I, I, I made sure I said Dr. Saran because I want I want to just call you by your first name, but I'm going to put some respect on the titles, okay? Um, Dr. Saran, can you introduce yourself to the people? Good afternoon, good morning, good evening, wherever you're watching or if you're watching the replay afterwards. My name is Saran King. I am from the beautiful Twin Island state of Antigua and Barbuda, and that's located in the heart of the Caribbean. I am a medical doctor, I am a holistic health coach, an author, a speaker, a mom, and I am also a black woman healing and a client, uh, past client <laughs> of Rashni, and she saved my life. <laughs> oh my goodness, wow, what an introduction. Okay, so, 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 before we get into what Saran is talking about, which is why I asked her to come, because this is going to be such a fun conversation. Also, I haven't spoken to Saran in like a long time face to face. So I'm so excited to see your face. <laughs> Hi. Okay. Before we begin talking about this great uh, personal awakening and why she's telling me that I saved her life. Okay. Every month I am highlighting a black woman author. Amen. This month I am highlighting uh, this book, Dream, Plan, Succeed, Building a Business and Brand That's Perfect for You by my YouTube bestie, Tony Daly. Okay, there is a link on how you can purchase this book in the information box of this video. And surprise, surprise, my guest today actually has a book too that I'm going to let her talk about later. But there is a link on how you can find this book in the information box of this video as well. Amen. I love a Black woman author. Okay, okay. First of all, if a conversation about personal awakenings and figuring out your why sounds good to you, make sure that you like this video on whatever platform you're on. I'm trying to get better at asking people to su subscribe and like the video because it tells the algorithm to show it to more Black women who could use this information. Okay. Okay. So, Dr. King. Okay. Should I call you Siren or should I call you Dr. King? You can just call me Siren. <laughs> I know. Okay. Okay. Siren, let's... let's talk about why I asked you to come. First of all, <clears throat> give people a little bit of background as to us working together. Can you start there? Right. So I, I'm not even sure how I stumbled on your page, but I started watching you on YouTube because you started off with natural hair videos and I was into my, not, well, I all, I've always had my natural hair. Um, but it wasn't always so popular when my hair was natural. And I'm not sure how I stumbled on it, but I stumbled on it and I started following you. And I guess I resonated because you're also from the Caribbean. So even though you live in the U.S., you could relate with Caribbean people and our culture. And it was a time, I think when I started following you, I wasn't working. I just came back from university and I was, I feel like I was in a slump mm -hmm. and I learned, learned, later learned from you that that was actually imposter syndrome that I was experiencing, but I didn't have a label to it back then. And somehow I ended up following your page, which 
back then it was celebrate new growth and then you change oh, the wow, name you've been around a long time <laughs> yeah <laughs> and then you change it to find your light and i signed up with your coaching and it took a while and and for a moment i thought like what's the point of this coaching <laughs> it's not working <laughs> And just like anything else that takes time to heal, to grow, to um, come into new being, it was the same with me. So it wasn't like a aha moment. It was more like, oh. And then the pieces started fitting together. And then I think I was in the first group that did the mind, body, spirit challenge that you did mm -hmm. and i think that was the real awakening for me when we did that challenge and the identity work it, the pieces really came together for me and i was like this is my purpose Roshni found help me find my purpose okay 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 so <laughs> you just said a lot of stuff and i love it so much first of all i forgot to mention that um, there have been iterations of my coaching, right? I've offered one-on-one -on -one coaching. Well, first of all, I was just out here on the internet talking and people were pinging me saying, how could they work with me? And I was like, what does that mean? So over the years, it has evolved, okay? I've offered one-on-one -on -one coaching. And in the past, I've offered group coaching in different versions, right? So Ron was in the free Facebook group, which still exists. There's a link to it in the information box of this video, which is Find Your Light. And she was also in the first, iteration of my group coaching back then, which I think was Shine. I think that was what it was called. So anyway, yes, FYI, shine. you guys, I am restarting my group coaching tomorrow. <laughs> okay. So the timing of this could not be better because listen, so that is happening. More information on that, which is the pineapple crowns is in the information box of this video. I'll talk about it more later. However, I love that you were honest enough to say that when you were working with me, first you were like, <laughs> what is the point of this? <laughs> because because one of the things that I'm trying to communicate especially for anybody that signs up with coaching with me I am not going to make you no promises to get you healed by the end of summer and I feel like if anybody tells you that they got a kickball change that is going to just change your life in 20 days that is a catalyst for transformation but that's never what I offer so yeah, I am very much a slow, incremental, digestible, doable type of coach. And even more so than when you were working with me, Saran, I have realized that like healing is a slow process that takes time over, you know, moments where you partner with somebody. So anyway, okay, okay. So the challenge that Saran is talking about is I used to offer a 30 day mind, body, spirit challenge, right? And it is exactly what it sounds like for 30 days. I would, I would, um, post, it took lots of different forms. It was email ones. It was in the group ones. It was coaching platforms, but you know, similar, uh, idea. And for 30 days, I would walk a group of women through prompts that had to do with the topic of mind discovery and development body physical things and spiritual things right and so that's what you're talking about that's what you participated in okay i don't know if i've ever heard you i think i've heard you tell me this before but i'm super interested because you said that you had a oh moment and i know you've told me this multiple times that something about participating in the mind body spirit challenge which i'm not 100 percent sure if i'm going to offer it again but if i am going to offer it it's going to be part of my coaching membership. So get on the wait list for that um, in the future. So let me ask you this, Saran. What was it? Where were you before you did the challenge? You said you weren't working. Were you working by the time you got to the challenge? Like, where were you yes. mentally, spiritually? When we got to the challenge, I was working, but where, where, how long ago that was? I'm trying to remember. I think I already had my son. Uh, I already had my house, but I was still unsure about what I wanted to do career-wise. And aren't you? So, a, aren't you a medical doctor? Yes, I am, but I'm not, I'm I'm like an outlier. <laughs> what do you mean by that? Because I think when I, I don't do you, I don't I run my work. yeah I I don't run my practice like other doctors do. So I don't sit down in the office from eight to five seeing patients, writing prescriptions. I am slow paced like you as well. 
So I want time to spend with my patients, um, minimum one hour, uh, sometimes two hours talking to them, really trying to peel off the layers of what is the issue. Mm -hmm. And I also do a lot of presentations. So I did one today, actually. I do presentations to groups. And I I like that. I like the educating part of medicine. So I don't, I, I'm not so fond of the diagnosis part and being in the ER and jumping on the chest. And no, I like, <laughs> I like the spiritual part. I like the mental health. So I focus a lot on mental health. So people would reach out to me all the time to make presentations specifically on mental health. Uh, and so because of that, there aren't many doctors where I live who do that. Uh, most persons have an office, they, all, they hire a nurse, they hire a secretary, they pay for space. I turn my entire house into my office. So it doesn't look like a typical doctor's office to begin with. Um, I have my, I decided that I didn't want it to feel like you're going to like a hospital type of setting. So when you come up is really Zen, I have like essential oils, diffuser, I have inspirational um, messages uh, in my office. So it's not the typical feel that you will get when you go to uh, a doctor's office. And because of that, I, you know, I, I attract certain types of clients. Okay, so understand. let's talk about where you were. So you came, you worked with me on the 30-Day Mind-Body-Spirit Challenge. What was the epiphany? What was the aha that you've told me about so many times? What was it? <laughs> and what shift did you experience because of that aha? So the epiphany was that I understood myself a little better after the challenge. And I think prior to that, I didn't really know myself enough to know what it is that made me click because we did this identity work with temperament and, you know, body clock, a morning person, evening person. I was like, oh, okay. I, did, I didn't even recognize all these things about myself because... I was like, what, what's the point of knowing about your temperament? I, I don't understand what Russian is trying to, to do here. Some of the things I rushed through just to do it, and then I had to go back. And I was like, okay, I understand. She's trying to get us to look at ourselves and realize that we are the problem. And it's not outside of ourselves. <laughs> well, you're not necessarily the problem, but that the solution you're looking for is inside right. of you. That's and what then, I was saying. So I, yeah. first of all, Saran, I love you because you're such an island woman. You're just like, what is the point of this? Listen, y'all. Okay. <laughs> Listen. I'm not saying that when I ask people to do stuff, it's going to make 100% sense up front. But yes, identity work. If you have worked with me in the past as your coach, one-on-one, -on -one, in a group, or even if you're going to work with me identity work is the foundation of my coaching. The reason why it's the foundation is simple. You can be creating a life that is not your life. And if you are a black woman, if you are a West Indian woman, if you are a woman, okay, chances are somebody told you who you were supposed to be, how you were supposed to show up, what your limits are, how high you could go, what kind of life you could create. And there's a lot of external voices telling you that thing. And my message is stop doing that, <laughs> figure out who you are and then create from that space. And so, especially women that work with me, most of us have never stopped to do that. I know I had never stopped to do it. That's why it's so revolutionary to me. I'm like, we kind of go on this conveyor belt. It's like this moving train that's handed to us of like, this is how you're supposed to show up. It's kind of like when you were saying, Saran, your, the doctor's offices that you are surrounded by are this way. And so the expectation probably with your degree and your certifications was, this is what a doctor's office is supposed to be. This is how a doctor is supposed to operate, right? What I'm trying to bring to people with identity work, because I, I believe very strongly that we live in the story that we tell ourselves. And so it's not necessarily that you're the problem, but it's more like the solution you're looking for, for the healed life that you say you want 
is actually inside of you. If you could just get your voice to be louder than the voices outside of you. And a lot of us don't take time to do that. So that was, that was what that was. And that is what that still is. And if you work with me as your coach, you're going to get sick of me talking about identity work, but uh, listen, you want to be free or not. So anyway, okay. So you, <laughs> so you did the challenge and you had your aha. Keep going. What was the aha? The aha was that I needed to do what I wanted. Because just exactly what you said, there were a lot of voices around. Even uh, I used to work in the hospital. And when I left from the hospital, people were saying, so what are you going to do? Like, there was no life outside of the hospital. Like, I was going to be suffering for the rest of my life because I'm not working there. And I listened to that. And I kind of, I think I went in a, a dark place where I was, I felt hopeless, thinking, okay, I should not have left. You know, maybe I should have stayed and continued suffering for a little bit more on that conveyor belt. And when I discovered your coaching and worked with you, I think my voice finally became a little louder and a little louder. And I realized this is what I want to do and this is what I'm going to do. So that's what I'm doing now, <laughs> living my life the way I want it, doing what I want to do. Um, while giving service to others. So I think that, that was the, uh, I, I discovered that because we had to answer all these questions about what kind of things people usually ask us, um, what's the things family members would usually ask us to do. And I was like, some, they always asking me to give presentation, give, so I do presentations now. And I never imagined myself doing that and getting paid <laughs> to do that because I've done things, but you know, everybody wants the church wants you to volunteer. Um, you know, everybody wants you to give of your service, but I'm like, but I need to eat, <laughs> I need money to live. <laughs> yeah, and also Saran has a very large Facebook group where she goes live once a month. Okay. And when I met Saran, she would not go live on a video. <laughs> What you laughing at? I can I because I did, I was talking to somebody just today about that that I did my first live during the pandemic. I've never done a live before that, and I did a challenge. I did a thirty day challenge, and I was the only person who completed all thirty days, and it just got easier. Do you remember that. telling me that you couldn't do the lives and me putting my foot in your <laughs> <laughs> and basically? Um, now this shift in that is so amazing to me because Saran be live. Okay. Saran be live on YouTube. Saran be live on Facebook. I'm like, well, who is this person? Who is this person? Okay. So can you tell people beyond, um, having your home be like your doctor's office, et cetera, what type of services do you, um, provide now? And are those services only in person on Island or do you do virtual services? So I do both. I do medical consultations. Um, I do house calls, but I also do virtual and in-person um, presentations, health and wellness presentations, which I've done before and I've gotten paid <laughs> for as well. So uh, I do have a speaker form. You fill that out and anybody who wants me to give a presentation, they can just reach out and I will send that link so that can look you are the one who told me to do that to do the form the speaker form it's like just send the link <laughs> so yeah, again thanks to Rush Day. Saran, it's and this is listen this is one of those things where it's like follow me as i follow christ i also i mean just because i'm a coach doesn't mean that i'm not on my own journey right i had to learn how to put value on what i brought I remember learning that you were a medical doctor and being like, girl, what? Like, girl, you got like letters and stuff behind your name. Because when you first came to my coaching, you were real covert about a lot of stuff. You didn't say much about the background. So when I found out, I was like, girl, you're a doctor. And it was about valuing what you bring. There was so much value when your voice started getting louder, when you started sharing with me some of the external voices that were telling you things. And then I started hearing your internal voice get louder and louder and louder as we work together. 
I was like, girl, there is value on that. They better put some respect on all of these certifications and your name. <laughs> and, and that's another thing I want to point out, just Black women in general. And this is something that I'm learning. We have a tendency to be devalued externally. And so therefore we devalue ourselves. We are given a message of sacrifice, which is a noble cause. Nobody's saying that it's not a noble cause, but as Saran pointed out, Saran has to eat. Okay. <laughs> and Saran has popped out children. All right. And Saran is going to tell you about her snapback challenge because I have seen Saran be pregnant and stomach go back to flat, flat. Okay. I had to get in on that. I have watched this woman's stomach bake a whole kid. Okay. And then all of a sudden go back to flat. And she got a challenge that could help you with that. So anyway, we devalue ourselves. There's knowledge that you bring to the, to, to the table. There's knowledge that you bring to your presentations, to your book, to your patients, right? And especially when you show up as yourself, like especially as you show up as yourself. Okay, so here's a question. You are a health coach. How does your background as a medical doctor influence your how you work with your patients? Well, I have the actual evidence-based information from medical school, but I am the type of person who I am not big on medication. So I also like to bring in the holistic, traditional remedies for treatment. And a lot of the issues, and I was doing a presentation this morning and I was saying that most of the issues, medical issues that people come to in the office, whether it's high blood pressure, diabetes, when you get to the root of the problem, it's some sort of stress. It's stress related, some stress related thing. Uh, and so I find myself being more like a counselor and actually I'm doing a course to get my actual certification um, in check so that I can have those credentials behind my name because, you know, um, but I think bringing both to the table, the traditional and my personal experience from how I grew up in the Caribbean and having the actual evidence-based medicine together, it makes a difference with the way I show up for my patients. And a lot of people are referred to me because there was the, the person would say, oh, I don't want to use any medication. And they say, check Dr. King. She doesn't like to use medication. <laughs> She'll have some other remedy for you. <laughs> but see, that's what I, see, I love. Oh my God. I love that so much because first of all, Caribbean women. Okay. I had somebody ask me if it's black women only that I want to do coaching with. And I was like black and West Indian women, because I can relate to your experience very much. So if you're a black woman and a West Indian woman like Saran come through, but if you're just a West Indian woman, I'll coach you too. Okay. Cause I got you, but you are correct because I love that you said you started showing up as yourself and now people are recommending you because you're yourself. Yeah, definitely. I love that. I love that. Okay. So in your bio, you said that you work with busy moms right? And you actually kind of already answered my next question, which was some of, what are some of the biggest health and wellness challenges that you tend to run into when you're working with busy moms? And, and also, how do you address it? So you said stress. Is there anything else? Uh, usually there's, they're short on time. So I can't be doing a workout for an hour and a half when you have, you know, little children running around, um, persons who want a way to make life easier. So meal prepping uh, and finding little ways that you can get in an, a workout, like taking the stairs instead of the elevator. Or one of the things that I like to do is do some squats while I'm brushing my teeth. You know, just little things that you can do um, in order to just get that movement in, little things you can do to swap out unhealthy things for healthy things, because it's a slow shift, just like the coaching. It's a slow shift. It's not like a 360. We're going to just come and clean out the whole house and then all your habits will be changed. So it's a change in the mind first about what they're capable of, um, what is practical in the moment uh, within their budget and for their lifestyle. And then making that shift slowly. So today I'm going to do a five-minute workout because I don't have any other time. And then you build up. 
or today I'm going to eat a fruit. I haven't eaten any fruits for weeks. Yeah, just a simple little things that you can swap out so that it, it doesn't feel overwhelming uh, and they, there is a shift without drastically turning your whole life upside down. And so that's what I, I usually tell people, like, you're not going to wake up tomorrow morning and feel like running a, a half a mile or a mile because you haven't done that in years. You have to start where you are and then build up slowly to where you want to be. And it starts with the, those habits, simple habits, just swapping them out one by one. I do a lot of things, and I tell people this all the time. I do a lot of things, but I didn't start everything the same time. I, one habit at a time, one habit, one habit. And then as you do it, it becomes like autopilot. It becomes autopilot. And do what you, is the second part from the, the um, question? I was asking uh, about how you approach the challenges with those ladies, but you did answer that part. So my next question would be, do you have people, do most people come to you for the physical, for the body, uh, for healing their body, and you discover later that there's something mental or spiritual? Or are people coming to you now, speaking to you first about mindset challenges? Well, for some reason, people think that I, I specialize in, I, I'm a psychiatrist, which I'm not. <laughs> but because I speak so much about mental health, I say I do general health with a focus on mental health. So I get a lot of referrals with persons who may have mental health um, challenges, for instance, anxiety or depression or panic attacks. I get a lot of people who get panic attacks and they were usually referred to me by either another doctor or by somebody, a social worker or a therapist. Uh, so I do get a lot of referrals and people know me for talking a lot about mental health. So they think that that's the primary focus. So they're usually referred because of that first, the mental health piece. I want to point out something, Saran, that is very much West Indian culture, but also Black American culture. Did you just hear what you said? You are actually, okay, growing up in the Virgin Island, there was no focus on mindset, mental health, to my knowledge. I was never aware of any provider or person that I could be recommended to that spoke about the topics that you are covering. Panic attacks? I still have people in my family who will describe in full detail a full-out panic attack. And when I call it a panic attack, no, 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 man. That's for crazy people. <laughs> yeah, I think that's where the stigma comes in. But thankfully for the, the pandemic really kind of shone the light on that. And it, the layers are... are peeling off because we, you know, I grew up like that as well, where there was zero focus on that, you know, a woman talking about postpartum depression, oh, you know, it's, it's just thrown under the table, it's dismissed, it's not even, it wasn't even spoken about, you know, but now it's, people are more open to it, but you still have to be a little cautious, at least in the Caribbean, still have to be a little cautious if I'm going to recommend if it's something outside of my scope and i say okay you need to see a therapist i usually ask them if they're open to speaking to a mental health professional um before i recommend that because people are oh you think i'm crazy and i'm like no i don't think you're crazy at all <laughs> yeah i that's such a i'm so fascinated by that i'm so happy one that you started showing up at your as yourself so that you could provide this kind of stuff to people in the islands especially and i'm sure as black americans listening to this there is a stigma up here but it's even more in the caribbean it's even more i mean i think living up here i'm in missouri so living up here in the states it is much more accepted um culturally up here to speak about mental health than it is in the caribbean because that whole stigma of you're calling me crazy, you're calling me crazy, right? So I love that you, one, discovered your purpose, which was always there. You just had to find it. And 
<laughs> and two, that you are filling a need where other practitioners, that's what I hear you saying, other mm -hmm. practitioners on island are aware that you are filling this need and that you they can send people to you so that you can walk with them through this process that is a slow process because being introduced to mindset work, mental health work, what could be the underlying cause of your anxiety that could then be having physical symptoms is very new and very delicate work for communities that have a stigma. Yeah. Can I ask a question, Saran? So you're, you're not big on medication. I am not big on medication either. What, what do you do? You just be prescribing bush? What? <laughs> no, like, for real. Well, what unless, unless a person asks me, because people would ask, well, you know, what kind of bush I can take for this? And one of the things I always say, even if you're taking some sort of bush, you still need to measure that it's working. So you can't just be pulling some bush randomly and using it because um, Mildred down the road said this good for pressure, but you didn't actually check your blood pressure to see <laughs> what it is. <laughs> we still need to check it. I'm not against you taking whatever bush you want to take. Um, it's okay as long as you're measuring it to know that it's working. So I do prescribe medication, but not a lot. Uh, I'm not against medication, but it's not my first go-to. So I do a lot of mindset work. I speak a lot about journaling because, you know, I have a journal. If you didn't know, well, I have a journal. <laughs> so I speak about mindfulness. Uh, I speak about phys being physically active because that also affects your mental health, um, moving your body, exercising, dancing, whatever it is that you like to do. Um, I speak a lot about self-care, not just going in the spa and getting your hair and nails done, but health, setting healthy boundaries, um, being your authentic self, connecting with nature, connecting with your higher power, whatever that is for you. So I talk a lot about those other things that seem to be overlooked, breath work as well. Uh, the presentation I did this morning, we did a little breath work at the end. So um, you know, can... in the Caribbean teaching people breath work? <laughs> breath work. Oh, I should talk about that. <laughs> because I think it's a, it's um underutilized and very essential tool that we overlook, journaling mm -hmm. and breath work. So I have, I've coined this little phrase called the pause and breathe. When you're having your inner crisis, you just pause and take some deep breaths to calm your body down so you can make a rational decision. Because when we're in fight and flight mode, we can't think clearly. We can't make a sound decision. And so just as simple as taking three deep breaths, because we don't have to be meditating on top of the mountain for a whole hour and a half or a day and a half, but three breaths just to bring our body to a state of calm so that we can make the next best decision for us. So those are a lot of the things that I talk about. If all of that doesn't help at all, at all, at all, at all, I usually refer them to a therapist so that they can be properly diagnosed. Maybe there's something that needs to be properly diagnosed. And maybe medication, some people are against medication, but I feel like even if you're taking medication, whether it's a mental health issue or if it's high blood pressure, you still have to have lifestyle changes. You still have to change your, the way you eat, the way you move your body, the way you think, your perspective on life, managing stress, breath work. You still have to do all of that along with the medication if, you're, if medication is warranted. And sometimes you're in a crisis and medication is needed for that time. But most persons don't want to take medication. And a lot of people are non-compliant with medication, which is why I don't start with medication. Because you're going to prescribe this thing that's going to have 101 side effects, and they're going to stop taking it. And they might tell, they will tell you, Doc, I don't take those thing pills every day now. And I would say, that's fine, but check your blood pressure. If it's doing okay, you know, you're okay. Because I don't believe that somebody needs to be on, depending on what it is, they need to be on medication for the rest of their life. I've had a lot of people come and they say, oh, the doctor said I'm going to have to take this until I die. And I don't believe in that. I, I believe that we should be working to reduce our dependency on any medication you're on. So if you're on two tablets, you're trying to get down to one. If you're on one, you're trying to get to none. 
or you try to avoid it as much as possible. Aran, okay, I have an online friend. Her name is Stephanie Perry, and she works with a lot of Black women who want to take a sabbatical, move abroad, et cetera, et cetera. And whenever she hears somebody talking about something that she influenced them to do, she says, I'm going to take the credit for that. Stephanie also <laughs> told me that I should be taking more credit for women's natural hair because I, because I was foundational. The way that I kind of teared up just now, I'm not even joking. I'm a, I teared up thinking about the fact that this woman is down there healing this island. And part of that is because I worked with her. So like, I wonder if and I wonder if Antigua on the stand that I get to take a little bit of the credit for all of these other things that are that happening of down course. there. Of course, you should, you should. I should. I talk about you all the time. I've introduced so many of my friends to your page and they join, uh, you know. So. And you know what's important, you guys? This is just a total aside. This is why you need to figure out who you are and put your thing out into the world because there are ripple effects, okay? I'm working with Saran years ago and I had no idea. One, I didn't even know you were a doctor, okay? We was just back here working on stuff. Two, I had no idea you were going to have any epiphany. I had no idea your epiphany was going to shift the trajectory of how you decided to show up in your practice. I had no idea that all of this well, that's not true. Caribbean people are very much holistic minded people, which is why I think it's easier for you to tell people to drink some bush than this to take a pill. Because in the Caribbean, we like to go outside and pick a leaf. We Listen, we will go outside. We will boil a hibiscus petal before we take a pill. Okay, we, we are very much that type of a piece of bark. Give me a piece of bark. Right. So that part of it, I totally understand. But it brings me so much joy to know that when I became aligned and started walking in my alignment, it then affected how I showed up for you. And now it's affecting how you show up for your patients in a way that hopefully continues to be um, the life you want to create, as opposed to you, like you said, being miserable in an office, having 15 <laughs> minutes with a patient. Right. So that that just made it literally made me tear up. I I I just anyway, okay. Okay, 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 okay. So not your mom. I put it on the screen earlier. She said, so true. I'm glad it's on the forefront because it took so long for my community to recognize when help is needed. Yeah, I think that the work Saran is doing, especially in the community where she lives, is so important. And it's part of why I'm very adamant about us showing up as ourselves. Oh, you know what else you said, Saran, that is so important that I want to like highlight this. I feel like the beginning of most healing is in the pause. I've seen so much healing happen in so many different areas of people's lives when they take a moment to be still. When you said pause, what, what, what did you say your saying was? Pause and breathe. Pause and breathe. Listen, that has a like a physical benefit that turns into a neurological benefit. Because when you start doing breath work, you guys, it can get your prefrontal cortex back online. Because at that point, you, you in fight or flight, you can't even process properly. So you just out here making crazy decisions. That pause and breathe can get your frontal lobe working again. And your frontal lobe is where your executive functioning and your more rational thinking is. That pause and breathe can get your nervous system to calm down. Like there's so much. And in like a spiritual and divine sense, when you take a minute, anyone, to intentionally get off the conveyor belt, that's what I'll call it. Intensely get off the conveyor belt, like Saran did, work with a coach like her clients do, work with her as a doctor. When you take a moment to stop and be still, often that's when you start to be able to hear your inner, like the inner voice that has been silenced for so long. We can't hear ourselves. Like we can't hear ourselves. And a lot of that healing is inside of us. That's what I've noticed. I don't know if you've noticed that in working with your patients. Or not. It's like people are just going, 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 doing the next thing that externally they're, they're told to do. And they don't stop. 
And what you provide for them is like a stop. Hey, hey, your body is crying out. Your brain is crying out. <laughs> Go ahead. No, I saying just taking a time out. And that was one of the things I mentioned today is to fight for your alone time. To just be still so you can hear yourself. Because as you said, we, we get caught up in the everyday, you know, we go in, we kick, cook and clean, we're dealing with the children, we're going to work, we, and we're not stopping to re recognize how we're feeling. A lot of the times when I do the breath work, one thing, the feedback people would say, they were like, oh, I didn't notice my hair was plucked so tight. I didn't notice my jaw was, you know, I was, cause I would tell them to relax their body uh, relax your jaw, your shoulders. Then they notice they have a tension in their, their shoulders or they notice, okay, they have a pain in their hip or they have a hip, but they were not noticing it before. Because before we start the breath work, they have to close their eyes, be still, be aware of their body, how they're feeling in the moment, if they're tired, if they're frustrated, happy, hungry, whatever it is, their mind is somewhere else and kind of just live in the moment. Um, I don't remember who said it, wherever you are, be there. I don't know if it's Jim Rohn's, somebody. Uh, wherever you are, just be there. I, we only have this moment, and so we ought to be present fully because we can be present physically, but mentally we are elsewhere. We are thinking about that email that we have to send or what we're going to cook for dinner or some bad breakup or some health scare that diagnosis we got. And we, we don't take enough time to just appreciate and just to be aware of how we're feeling in the moment. And so that's one of the reasons why I do the breath work as well. So people can be more aware of how their bodies are feeling because um, stress can manifest as physical pain in the body as well. You know, the tension, headaches, pains in the, the shoulder. People get a lot of nuts in their, their shoulders and pains in their knees and their hips. And when you look at it, it's some sort of stress-related issue. Usually, it's some relationship stress or some financial stress. <laughs> Those are at the top of the list. Something, somebody acting a fool and it's just um, affecting you. <laughs> so are you are causing it. Allowing Do you have it. any story that you could uh, share? You don't have to share anybody's name, just mm -hmm. generally of somebody that you worked with that experienced that transformation, especially working yes. with them on mindset stuff that basically mm -hmm. like helped them. So I have a young lady who I now call my friend because I decided to <laughs> make her son my god, my godson. Mm -hmm. And years ago, she used to have a lot of panic attacks. She would call me all hours of the day and the night. And I think this was part of when I was doing the mind, body, spirit with you, when you were asking, what will people ask me to do? And I now say that one of my superpowers is to make someone feel safe and calm when they're going through a crisis, because that's one of my superpowers. So she would have these panic attacks and she would call me and she uh, all stressed out. And she worked with me for a few years. We were doing some exercises. Um, I started having her journaling. Um, I referred her to a therapist as well. And she went and she saw that therapist for over a year. And she still does get the panic attacks, but she knows what triggers it. She knows how to deal with it. And one of the reasons why she was also stressed out, she wanted to have a baby. And she eventually had a baby this year after almost 10 years of trying. And I was so excited for her. I think I was more excited than her. And I can't believe it's the same person. <laughs> She's very shy. She would never come on a live um, <laughs> to talk about. But she always tells me, you know, you saved my life. She said the same thing to me um, a couple weeks ago. And I was like, that's so cool. <laughs> I'm going to take credit for that too. No, just kidding. I'm getting you like, can, you can. I'm gonna take credit for that stream, okay? <laughs> Tell her I said you're welcome. No, but listen, you know what you just made me remember? I remember, okay, so let's let's shift to this because we're wrapping up soon. I remember when you had your second pregnancy, because we were coaching during your pregnancy, right? Yes, yes, and yes. I remember a couple things. I remember us talking through some mindset stuff of your own. 
and you having an aha moment in there. And then I remember this incredible snapback. So can you talk to people about your own, let me see, what did I write down here? Describe your pers- your own health and wellness journey when it comes to like mindset and body stuff. And this one of your superpowers, which is to have your stomach be flat no matter how many children you think you have. <laughs> Well, I think I kind of grew up in it because seeing uh, my mother, especially, I was telling the the persons this morning, one of the things mommy insisted that we do in the morning was to take some deep breaths of the nice, cool, crisp air. And I never understood that. I don't think she understood it either, but uh, it was something that we she encouraged us to do, take some deep breathe. She's always been on doing this deep breathing. So I kind of grew up with um, living a healthy lifestyle. Uh, she's the kind of person that loved to exercise, go on her walks, go to the beach, um, eat very healthy fruits and vegetables. So I kind of grew up in that, but the mindset piece was the missing link. So the, you know, taking care of your body, she's the kind of person, she doesn't like to see a bruise on your skin. Um, you know, you have to eat on time and drink enough water. That part was okay. I think it's only until I got older, um, probably in my thirties, really. Oh, sorry. I'm still in my twenties. I forgot. <laughs> you know, you used to get me with that. Saran used to get on the coaching calls, and every time Saran got on the coaching call, she was a different age. At first, I thought she was telling the truth because, as you can see, the skin is skinny. So how, you don't know how old these black women are. Okay, the woman was telling genetic. how old she was, and me like a dodo bird, I'm thinking she's telling me the truth. Until she pop up one day with a milestone birthday, I said, "But how you get from back there to up here? What you do?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I'm not ashamed now to tell people because you know that's another Caribbean thing. We don't tell people our age. I'm 40. I'm 40. I'm gonna let you know. Yes, it's genetics. We have good genes in our family. Um, yeah. So as I was saying, the mindset piece I think was the missing piece, and the coaching I think kind of connected that to the physical part. So I would always like to move my body and eat healthy, and it's partly genetic as well because I'm, I'm naturally slim, actually. <laughs> but I, my body was fit before I had children, so it made it easier. Saran, I hard. am naturally slim as well, okay? But my, <laughs> you really got to show the stomach for. But the way my stomach is doing that, I naturally stem to. Now, here's the thing, y'all. I'm not about to stand up and do what Saran just did because y'all don't want it, especially <laughs> after the pandemic. <laughs> this sedentary lifestyle said, what are you doing? <laughs> That's the question I need to ask. So tell people about, okay, so y'all see Saran's stomach. Saran has had two children, okay? I watched her bake a kid. And you actually work with, I know that on your YouTube specifically, you used to have natural hair content, but then you kind of transitioned over to physical health content. Mm -hmm. And I also know that you will work with mom specifically on getting their snapback, right? So what, what, and you have a challenge coming up, what kind of work do you do with mom specifically about getting the core back to, you know, its previous glory? Well, funny enough, my focus is not the physical. The focus is the mental piece because, you know, 80% of women go through postpartum blues um, mm -hmm. after they have a baby. And so I kind of try to prepare. I, I actually have a client right now who ha just had a baby two weeks ago. So I'm trying to mentally prepare her for the emotional changes. You know, one day you might just wake up feeling happy. One day you feel sad. And that comes with having a baby. And so I try to prepare people for that. And again, little things that you can do to work out your body because you just had a baby. But one of the first things I tell people when they just have a baby it's like you just brought life into this world. There's no working out for the first two months, like nothing. You don't do anything. You just concentrate on keeping that baby alive. Breastfeeding is another big thing for me because that also helps with your recovery physically. Um, you know, the bonding with the, the baby and also the baby um, immune system. And so there's a mental, physical component with just the breastfeeding. So I'm a 
I'm a breastfeeding advocate here in Antigua, actually. Uh, we have a group that, so when with new moms to teach them how to breastfeed and all the things you can do and everything that comes with breastfeeding. So I only use the word snapback because it's catchy, mm -hmm. but the focus is really not on the physical. It's on the mental and emotional part. But I just, it's, it's a catchy name. <laughs> so your challenge then is not just about the physical, the physical setback, no. right? No, You're saying it's about, it's about the mental, mental and emotional yeah. part. Because one thing people would ask me, oh, how long, how long would you give me to get my body back in shape after I have a baby? And I, I say two years. I give you two years to get your body and your mind back to what it was before you had a baby because it usually takes that long for you to feel like yourself again with the extreme exhaustion it, just all the changes embracing the changes because everybody's body is not going to come back the way it was before the baby and we have to embrace i mean there are things on my body that will never go back never go back <laughs> and i have i also too had to embrace that that okay i just brought life into this world um yay me for keeping the human race alive i did yeah. my part <laughs> and so i have to own that first that's one of the things that i do first like you just had a baby the same friend i told you about the panic attacks mm -hmm. her son will be five months next tomorrow actually tomorrow he'll make five months and she wants to get back out there and it's like remember you just and she had a c-section yeah so it's even more healing time and i was like you have to take it slow you know just concentrate on the baby do some walks with the baby just start with that just gentle walks because your body needs to physically heal from all of that and she had a traumatic birth experience and your body, your mind as well needs to come back. And it's going to be a slow snapback for the mind. It's not, uh, you know, you'll have the baby today and tomorrow you're back. Because there's so much emotions that come with um, having a baby. So the link to uh, join Saran's snapback challenge uh, in April is in the comments of the video on Facebook and YouTube, and it's also in the information box. Saran, I don't know if you remember this, but when you were pregnant, we had some conversations about external voices telling you things. And I remember telling you, boo-boo, you are bringing a whole human being into the world. I'm gonna need you to ignore them. This is amazing. So I just, once again, I love hearing you say that because I was like, I recall being like, girl, I'm sorry. There is an entire human being in your stomach. That is amazing. And you were like, you know what? You're right. Girl, <laughs> they out here got you. I don't know what they're talking about. You need to quiet. Those voices outside need to get quieter and quieter. And I really want you to understand that you are doing something pretty freaking spectacular right now. Right? <laughs> pretty freaking spectacular. Oh, M. Adams, what is that? Somebody just dropped a, a, a thing here. Brushni, you have helped me as well by answering my question about natural hair. Thank you. Oh, this is my friend from California that uh, we share tacos. It's a long story. You know how I be meeting strangers on the internet. Hi, boo boo. <laughs> Listen, I met somebody. We share tacos in California. Hi, thank you so much for that. Um, okay, so I put a link. Sorry, I didn't realize my, my battery was going down. So I'm okay. just going to run quickly for the card to plug it in. Okay. Okay. So the link for Saran to connect with Saran, I dropped it in the comment section mm -hmm. of the video and it's in the information box as well as the link for her challenge. And now I want you, when she finishes um, plugging in her stuff, I want Saran or Dr. King to talk about her book. When you finish plugging in, Saran, I'm I'm finished. Let's talk about the book. I'm gonna be Oprah. Can you tell everybody about your book? Well, the book is I like to say it was accidental, but nothing <laughs> is accidental. So before the book came out, I had a blog. <laughs> I like that picture. I had a blog and it had a different name from the name that I have now. And I started that blog because I was in a very toxic working environment. Mm -hmm. I started writing. 
as a way for me to relieve energy, just, you know, just to have something because I, I don't smoke, I don't drink, I, I'm not a party person, none of my friends are. And so I started doing this blog. And a few years ago, actually in 2018, I think it was, uh, maybe the end of 2017, I was trying to get somebody to do a planner for me because I, I've had a journal, I've written in a journal every day for the past maybe 10 years now. Mm -hmm. And I was trying to get somebody to make one planner for me because I usually get a planner from some business place and they stop producing the planners, so the journal. So I wanted to get a, di a diary for myself. Trying to get somebody here doing to do it couldn't get anybody i went on facebook fishing in all these groups anybody knows how to make a planner a few people reached out and uh, a lady who eventually did my book she was the only one that asked me some different questions and the time was coming up january was coming up i think january 2018 was coming up and i wasn't going to get the planner in time and i already paid this lady and i was like you know what probably now is a good time to do a book <laughs> and literally that's how the book came about so everything that was on my blog i put it in the book and the lady's like we need more content and i started writing like crazy i was just writing and writing and writing and writing i was so excited and a couple i think it was like a week before my book launch i accidentally dropped a boiling pot of water on my foot uh, it was blistered. I didn't seek medical attention, not advised. Uh, I just treated it myself. <laughs> and I actually had to sleep with my foot in a bucket of water because it was burning so much. And I was applying all sorts of cream and it was not helping. And I was still so excited about the book. I forgot about my foot. I just had the foot. I was like, yeah, this foot is not going to stop me from planning this book launch. <laughs> And so I had a book launch in October 2019. Uh, that's when I launched the book. And uh, the lady really exceeded my expectations. I told her the type of images that I wanted. And she it was it's such a beautiful book. They are colored images inside, mm -hmm. watermark images. And the lady, she's Australian. And I... One of the things I was going to show people, mm -hmm. the illustrations in this book, are top yeah. tier. Look at that, y'all. That's all I'm gonna show you. That's it. it's so nice. It's so nice. And then all color, all color, purple butterfly themes, and it took a while to get the book. And as a gift, the lady sent me a journal. She designed a journal behind my back <laughs> without me knowing, and she sent. And I was like, oh my god. So and it's a hard cover journal so, and it's really thick it's bigger than the regular journal mm -hmm. I have a journal here so this is a regular like exercise book and so it's a lot bigger than the normal diaries that you would get and then i ordered a bunch of them and people love them i'm yet to confront anybody who doesn't like the illustrations because the images are similar to what's in the book Mm -hmm. And so the book is on Amazon, but the, the journal is not uh, yet on So where on do Amazon. we get the journal? How come I need to, why, why I can't buy a journal? What's going on here? Where is it? <laughs> and it's so expensive to ship because it's hardcover. So it's a little weighty. So I'm trying to figure out how Mommy. I'm going to, um, to get it. Oh, <laughs> this is the little, the little one. one. I know, the, the little one. I was going to say, usually when I'm coaching with Saran, I see a child. <laughs> There's a baby. baby who's now three. Oh, wow. I no, know. wait. No, this is the. This is the baby that was in the belly. This is the snapback oh, baby. Hi. The oh, my God. Say hi. Hi. Say hi. Baby. Girl. Say hi. Oh, I thought it was your son. Oh. And look, the big baby coming behind there. Hi. That's Hi. the big one. Hi. I don't know if he remembers me. Hi. Yeah. Who it is? Who it is, Kaden? Rashni. He knows you. Oh, he does remember me. Hi. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I love that. Hi, you guys. Okay, okay, okay. So, link on how to find Saran's book is in the comment section, it's on her link tree. It's on Amazon. You can find it through there. 
and it's in the information box of this video. If I can figure out how to get these journals from Saran, I will also add the information to the box later. And yeah, I think that we did it. Um, let me see here. I'm getting a notification here, but let me make sure. I want you guys to know before we end, first of all, Saran, let me say thank you. It is a joy as always to chat with you. And thank you for sharing your story. Thank you for letting me know that I made an impact because that is one of the things that keeps me doing what I'm doing, growing, healing, and evolving. And thank you for showing up as yourself more and more every day so you can serve the community that you're in because it's powerful what you're offering and especially being a woman from the Caribbean. That would have probably changed my life if I had encountered somebody like you growing up, because a lot of the stuff that you are bringing to them now, I have had to figure that stuff out on my own. So I just wanna elevate that for you. Thank you. And for putting your book out into the world. Once again, links to everything about Saran is in the information box. I would like to remind you guys that the Pineapple Crowns coaching membership of my own, okay, opens tomorrow, Saturday, April 13th at 9 a.m. CST. Um, you can enroll on, you can get on the wait list and then you can eventually enroll via the pineapplecrowns.com. If you heard Saran at the beginning, it's going to be slow. It's going to be low. And it's going to be digestible. If you get back there, you're just like, what is the point of this? It's going to be a point eventually. Okay. <laughs> this is not healing by next Tuesday. That's not how I do it. Rushni creates an intentional life that hopefully can get you transformative results. Just like Saran got Saran. Thank you so much. Once another thing, you guys, Job Liberation Summit, just as an FYI, Marissa Price and Dr. Kamani Norton Sands are doing the Job Liberation Summit on May 18th through 19th. If you want information about how to get about your toxic job, a link to that in the information box of this video as well. I don't want you guys to forget that. All right. That's it, you guys. Be well, be encouraged. Let me find a better pineapple. I'm gonna go with the old school one, Saran. Here's a pineapple. Oh, nice. Okay, <laughs> this is my old phone case. Okay, bye, you guys. Saran, hold on there. Hold on. Hold on.